Casual Day Friday. Mike Levin. Friday. Uh, October the 13th. Oh, I didn't realize it until I said it out loud. But I'm not superstitious. Um, around 9 a.m. So, uh, heading into work. I have been beefing up my pandas education. Uh, there's a free O'Reilly PDF book on pandas. Uh, it's not in the title, but any search will show it up. That's uh, that I have the free file floating around somewhere, but it's not on my Kindle. It's not distributed out on the clouds everywhere I can read. So I downloaded a ten dollar uh, book that had four out of five star rating. So. I'm doing my actual reading education, which is one way of learning, uh, simultaneous to listening to the YouTube videos, flipping back and forth sometimes, seeing something in a YouTube red, red video that I had downloaded, which I'm watching uh, while offline on the subway. And uh, it can keep running in the background while I flip back and forth between uh, the video and the Kindle. Uh, right on the same device. I started using the uh, the Kindle for this because all these tutorials use this tiny little text. So I had downloaded a few of them on my uh, iPhone, which is uh, my current phone at the moment because my uh, screen of my Note 8 has already uh, cracked and I'm trying to uh, get the insurance uh, claim approved to fix it because the Note 8 is awesome still. And I want to do a lot more stuff with that. I can't even get this back in my back pocket. Uh, while the Kindle HD8 is a perfect form factor uh, for this sort of use, it's just that tiny bit too big to fit in uh, Jean's back pockets, uh, especially when it has like a case on it. So, um, pandas. Oh, pandas, where have you been all my life? Uh, it's interesting, I talked yesterday quite a bit about the comparison between sequel and pandas, looking at the uh, similarities and differences, and uh, it's not that sequel is obsolete by any stretch of the imagination, it's just that I have that slightly betrayed feeling that I get frequently after having invested oh, a decade or so a crossover where the sun glare isn't so bad. Actually, no, that's going to be tough to get through that. So, back this way. Um, to have 10 years after having uh, sort of mastered a technology for the trends to have changed. You know, God forbid it even be more quick, uh, as in a fad. So, fads, you know, change really quick every two or three years. Trends go for about 10 years before you have to relearn everything you know. And uh, if you stay in line with a trend, you won't have to relearn. So that's what Python is, going from a gradual Python 1 to 2 to 3. Python is only at version 3 after 25 years. Think about that. So um, Pandas is a data manipulation package, third party. Uh, within the Python ecosystem that sits on top of some very well established other packages such as NumPy, a numerical array pro processor number cruncher, what Fortran existed for back in its day. And uh, stuff going on here. Sorry about the audio. I guess I should talk, stop apologizing. By this time, uh, you know what you're in for. This is what you tune in for. The ability to get ideas through, the, the virtual unstoppability of you and what you do and your progress, no matter what else is going on around you, no matter how adaptable you have to be on the fly, certain things have to be committing themselves into your automatic muscle memory so that as the conditions around you change you can twist and bend and flex and adapt and that's what you look for in your tech technologies too um, 
such as Linux, Python, Vim, and Git that have that long-term durability. They're the P in the pool of tech. It's in and it's not coming out. Not that everything that ends up that way uh, should be elevated uh, to the realm of super tool that you should invest that 10 years or 10,000 hours into, uh, but some do and some are. Uh, for example, I probably wouldn't at this point invest much into AWK, A-W-K, um, but I would into SED, the stream editor, um, because there's plenty of cases where using uh, Linux command line uh, tool like stream editing actually is useful because you can pipe information from um, command to command, tool to tool, um, but what if you wanted to edit that stream of data going between the two? So, SED yes, AWK no. Um, and I rarely promote other types of things to be into in this realm of your primary toolbox, and I have recently done so against my better judgment on not just one, but two, and depending on how you count it, three uh, different things. Um, the first and most significant is Jupyter Notebook. I'll tell you, uh, I've always seen the value of a uh, interactive shell, a, a REPL, a report, execute, loop. Uh, I always forget what it is, but it's an interactive command shell. You type it in and it echoes back to you the results of what you typed in. It usually has some features built into it that are not native to the language, like not using uh, the word print when you want to see the output of a variable. You just type the variable name, hit enter, and you see its value. That's pretty typical of these interactive shell scripts. And this is one that lives in the web browser. So I've tried to do similar things to what Jupyter Notebook is pulling off in the Pipulate project and appreciate how crazy difficult it is to do this cleanly, appropriately, and well enough to be a ready for prime time tool. And they not only created the clean execution of Python, quote, in a web browser, uh, they've done it in real style, in a way that's easy to take up by noobs or amateurs. Noobs and amateurs such as financial analysts and scientists and uh, you know production engineers people who are not really amateurs or laymen by any measure but who have a job that they need to get done and in their hunt for the best way to get that job done have encountered Python so a lot of this stuff starts out in the financial analysis uh, market I believe that's where pandas uh, started out so it's the connecting of a bunch of dots. The web browser is a familiar host environment. Virtualization for uh, various Linux, uh, I want to say Linux kernels, but they're Python kernels. Python virtual machines to keep things encapsulated and sandboxed in your tabs. So, you know, I'm kind of rambling on about the fact that it's a familiar place where you can run some Python code. It's easy to install. They took care of all those cross-platform issues. Doing something on a Mac desktop is different from doing it on a Windows, is different from doing it from a generic Linux desktop. It's not true anymore. It's all the same when you go in through Jupyter Notebook. And then Jupyter Notebook gives you Python, and it gives you a whole host of by installing it through Anaconda from Continuum I.O., it gives you a whole host of related power tools of which Pandas is one and the killer app, the driving force, the video toaster, shall we say, of Python. Um, the, uh, the application that moves the, uh, the platform and the platform being a free download on any desktop platform to boot, so it's a pretty good deal. Um, as in the days of the video toaster, buying special hardware gave you 
seemingly magical video editing capabilities in the days when Macs couldn't even show video, Amigas were flying it around the screen in video transitions, uh, editing videotapes with prosumer equipment that had to spin tape back and forth like the old-fashioned idea of how, you know, Batman uh, 60s TV show computers were. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, losing my train of thought there. But, uh, yeah, the IDEs are uh, really easy and inviting and low barrier of entry. Uh, so everyone jumps onto the bandwagon and can have these powerful spells, cast this magic, have these incantations um, in a field or a discipline that's actually hot that everyone wants to be in. And it's not just data manipulation. That's that's a whole you know bucket of stuff. There's gathering the data from its different sources, doing the API data calls, check Python. There's cleaning the data, check pandas. Um, there's manipulating the data, check pandas. And then there's visualizing the data, check pandas with a built-in matplotlib. And if you want more, there's bokeh. So check pandas, a little check mark, and check Python, a big old check mark. Not quite as big of a check mark as JavaScript on the visualization front, but you know what? Python's not about the stuff inside the black box. Python is about the API. Let C optimizers worry about making, you know, JavaScript libraries run native performance smooth in a web browser. And let us have all the benefit of that as uh, Pythonistas just talking through translation layers or whatever you want to call these mapping layers. Um, wrappers sometimes they call it. Python's a very popular wrapper language. Um, so yeah, uh, my basic tool set has also changed. So that's the that's adding Jupyter Notebook and Pandas to my uh, to my primary tool set against every fiber of my being because heavyweight stack, but browsers, browsers and JavaScript are also pee in the pool of tech. What, are they going away? And if you want to create something that reaches, you know, today 2 billion and before long 10 billion people, you can't do much better than basing it on the web browser. So, so long as JavaScript is the across the board, collectively agreed upon standard for web browser, um, automation, user interface uh, language. It's again the pee in the pool of tech, very analogous to PostScript. PostScript isn't going away for a while because it played that role, but you know what? PostScript was proprietary and getting it out is painful, just as Flash, getting Flash out of the process uh, is painful. But base it on the free and open source stuff and that pain never has to exist. Um, as things go obsolete, you move on to the next big move. And as, soon, as long as you're talking Pythonically through wrappers and APIs, you are future proof. And I guess that leads to the last thing. Uh, uh, and it's on the JavaScript side of things and not the Python side, and that is Hyper.is. Hyper.is is terminal software built on the Electron desktop application platform, which is akin to uh, Qt, I think they call it, um, or TK, uh, or Java Swing. There's a number of these things which are the you know uh, user interfaces that are supposed to be. Uh, consistent across desktop platforms, so you can build the same desktop user interface, whether it's on a Mac, um, PC, or a Linux type machine. And uh, Electron offers such a platform by building it out of the, everyone's familiar with it and everyone has it installed, Chrome components. So it's a terminal where the terminal windows are actually web technology, just like the Atom ATOM text editor in GitHub, and I was very, very dubious, doubtful of it at first, and it's winning me over progressively. 
Uh, not the <laughs> least of which reason is that copying and pasting out of your command line terminals is now the same no matter what platform you're on. Windows, Mac, or PC. Am I saying Windows, Mac, or Linux? No matter what your desktop platform, you can open up that hyper.is terminal window, just click, highlight, drag, copy, paste it right into your native um, operating system application. So it's going from technically remote server where your terminal window is just like a text-based window, uh, copying and pasting it into uh, an, another machine. It's almost like the same of doing a file transfer, really copying and pasting between terminals and desktops. Anyone who uses PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y, knows the pain of this. And, you know, every platform has its way of doing it. Um, there's ver various ways of doing it, but there's no consistent way of doing it. With, hy with Hyper.is, now there is. Just install Hyper.is on all your platforms is one of your steps, but you're, if you install Chrome anyway, there's no reason not to use the occasional Hyper app. Um, I was a little skeptical because Slack, the Slack user interface, the few things that I did use that were on the Electron platform, I was not very impressed with. But over time, it gets smoothed out and each application is a chance to uh, better utilize the platform and Hyper.is has done it quite well. So anyway, that's my expanded tool stack, Linux, Python, Vim, and Git, and Jupyter Notebook, and Hyper.is. And Screen, that's the last one. And with that, I can uh, end the uh, video. Screen doesn't technically count as another because it's already part of the GNU command tool set, which is under the Linux of Linux, Python, Vim, and Git. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon, and don't forget to subscribe.